You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is The Human I Never Was by Jeremy Zoll. I gaze down at the new body they've slotted me into. It's a hulking one this time. All slick black and gunmetal gray with a hint of red. The limbs meticulously designed. The metal folded over each other like overlapping scales. I'm strapped in a mechanical cradle, watching greasy engineers scrambling to build my body, piece it together like some sort of puzzle. A coil of guts spills out from my kneecaps, twisting cables and jet black rivets. Tubes coil down from the ceiling, anchoring me. I try to move, try to get up, but my joints refuse to budge. It's like being set in concrete. One of them glances up from a flexiglass monitor. Hey, he's awake. Took them long enough. One of the scientists strides up to me. She's got graying hair and wrinkly skin. Way past her expiration date. Heels click on the polished marble floor. Voices flash through my mind. Faces. Names. A woman's face. Someone I'd known. Handing me a figure swaddled in quilts that can only be a baby. Their names are swimming somewhere in the back of my mind. I struggle to reach out and grab it. But it slips away. It's a marvelous body this time. This new woman's voice cuts the memory to shreds. You'll see. She's probably told me that before. Slowly, slowly, I swerve my eyes around and spot my last iteration lumped on a desk. It's a smaller model, all charred and twisted from battle. I can even see the ravaged chest plate peppered with bullet holes, the metal eaten away by cerulean colored acid. I remember how much it hurt getting shot back when I was still human. Won't be long. She rests a frail hand on my arm, offers a semi sincere smile. Seriously, the old hag should have kicked the bucket years ago. How the hell is she still alive? A hollow screen flickers in the corner. Words scroll across images of smoking buildings and ravaged city streets. A frantic voice booms out of the speakers. Tetrahedron-shaped objects hover in the sky, a horde of projectiles spilling out of its belly. I want to ask someone to explain it to me, but suddenly I don't know how to form the words. I've forgotten the sound of my own voice. In the corner of my eye, I see more parts coming in on the conveyor belts. Hands, arms, legs, torsos, rifles, railguns. All being split into various segments. They slide out of my peripheral vision. Someone's coming over. Suddenly, my entire world is rattling. My head filled with the sound of a massive drill boring into my thigh. Numbness shoots up my body, spreads across my chest. The white-clad engineer offers me an apologetic smile, like it means anything. He switches to my shoulder and the rattling grows. Another smile, bigger this time. My spine creaks. The metal across the nape of my neck tightens and my vision goes out of focus. Finally, he finishes and steps away. Wipes away beads of sweat. White-clad engineer number two paws at his data pad with fat sausage fingers. I feel a jolt as my pieces slide into place. My vision sharpens back. Gears whirling inside my head. Calibration complete. We're good to go. Excellent. Zone him out. Don't you dare. 
Blackness crawls at the edge of my vision. I make one last effort to move, to object, to do anything at all. But the shadows swallow me whole. A moment later, I'm staring out into space. I can finally move again. I'm stuffed into some sort of pod, a million lights flashing in my face. I strain against my anti-grav harness and gaze outside the portal window. I'm falling down to a dark green planet, orange licking the sides. Dozens, no hundreds of ovoid-shaped objects are falling with me, burning through the atmosphere like crimson hail. Shavings of blood-red light slips over the horizon, and beyond that are stars, a shifting blanket of color. Any other time, and it just might have been beautiful. I'm slammed backward, gel padding protecting me from the impact as the pod crashes down, splitting the ground open. My vision's blurry, a high-pitched whine ripping through my head. I tear free, ram my shoulder into the pod door. It bursts open, light pouring in. I stumble out onto mushy soil, my sight still hazy. Gunfire rattles from a billion miles away. Get moving. I scoop up an auto rifle from the ground, the weapon glowing like an old lover as I clutch it, hug it to my chest, like the child I should have had. The scream of twisted metal fills the air. Mechanic grunts and weapons being charged. Bodies dash past. Vehicles roaring and billowing ribbons of smoke. I stumble over fallen bodies as I charge toward the enemy. My HUD detects a grenade thrown my way. I dive for cover, but I'm too late and it blows a chunk of my chest plate away. I'll make sure to bill them. A red beam spits out and I'm spinning through the air like a flipped coin. Heads or tails. I crash to the ground, pieces of my body raining down. Then it all comes rushing back. Like blood to the head. Memory fragments of myself running toward the enemy. Young, stupid, and green as grass. I see myself being torn apart by the railguns. Bullets punching through my stomach. Shattering bones and shredding my body. I lay there for hours, my mind intact, as I waited and waited and waited for someone, saying my wife's name over and over and over. I see a shadow and manage to roll my eyes upwards. Medbots stream through the air, coming to retrieve my old body and collect the scraps. Darkness looms. Not again. I think, the sound of battle fading around me. Not again. This was The Human I Never Was by Jeremy Zoll. Jeremy Zoll is a Mediterranean-blooded mongrel who was born in 1995 in the outback of Australia where he was raised by wild dingoes. His science fiction, horror, and nonfiction have appeared in Nature, Abyss and Apex, Lightspeed, Strange Horizons, Tor.com, The Drabblecast, and has been translated into multiple languages. He is the fiction editor for the Hugo-winning Starship Sofa, and is represented by literary agent John Gerald, and hopes to sell a novel soon. He carves out a living in Sydney, Australia, with his family, where he drinks too much gin, watches too many cult films, and makes too many dark jokes. Find him at jeremyzall.com or on Twitter at jeremyzall. Check our show notes for links. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga.